Hey everybody, it's your girl Charlotte Van Horn, Sisters Talking Natural Hair and Business, Locks Forever. But guess what? I'm coming you to coming to you today um, for Black Expats in Panama, which you know is the Facebook group that has just absolutely exploded. And um, we have about 600 members now, so I'm really happy. If you haven't joined the group already, please do so. Um, we are going to be doing some things to help people transition to Panama. And we also want to be your source for letting you know what cultural things to do, you know, how to find the black culture in Panama, because sometimes that's what we're looking for. So today, what I want to do is I want to talk to you about, um, immigration and some other legal issues that we might encounter as we as we try to transition to being Panama residents, which I became a Panama resident a while back. Um, right now, I have Giovanna and Yolani with me, and they are with Prime Tax Solutions. Did I get that name right? Is it Prime, Prime Solutions Tax? Prime Solutions Tax and Legal. I always get that mixed up. But anyway, um, these were the women that ushered me into my Panama residence. And when I tell you that, you know, coming from the perspective of someone who knows nothing about Panama law, um, and, you know, I, my Spanish is not too good looking, which I love to say, which I want to say that my Spanish is excellent at one point, but it's just not. It was very important to me that I had, um, legal um, uh, counsel that I could trust, that, that could communicate with me in English. And, um, and that was a big plus. And so I found um, Giovanna through another person that had contacted with me, had connected with me about sister locks because she was gonna be moving to Panama. She told me that they gave her such an excellent service and that's how I ended up um, connecting with um, Giovanna. So we're going to have Giovanna and Yolani um, talking to us today about some stuff, but I did want to tell you about Giovanna. Giovanna has a degree in law and political science, and she is cum laude, hello, and she specialized in corporate tax, immigration, and legal industry in Panama. She is currently a partner of the Regulated Compliance Company for the Prevention of Money Laundering and a premium strategy and founder of Prime Solution Tax and Legal. And um, I just want to welcome you in, um, Giovanna and just ask you to introduce yourself um, to the people and um, let's get talking. Unmute. I said, no. oh, okay, there you Hi. go. There you go, <laughs> hi. Hello, Charlotte, thanks so much for this invitation. I'm so glad to be here, Jelani as well. We, we really thank you for this opportunity. And yes, to explain a little bit about myself, I studied law a few years ago, well, uh, more than 15 years actually, and I'm Panamanian, 100%. I study, I study law in Panama City, but I grew up in a city called Chitre. It's about four hours from the Spanish city. I study law and then I specialize in uh, taxation, corporate, corporate matters, and uh, compliance, especially. I worked for more than two, 10 years in a law firm, and then I decided to open um, my own firm three years ago, uh, offering e expat services about immigration, setting up Panamanian companies, doing business in Panama, and uh, advising them to, to live here and, you know, do business, mostly. Thank you. Yes, and, I, and, and congratulations on opening your own business because that's a big deal. It's a big deal, and it's and it's something to be congratulated. So now, um, Yolani, come on in and introduce yourself. Uh -huh. In 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 español, we will it's translate. Like, you're fine. Spanish is fine. Traducimos. <laughs> Buenas tardes. Eh, mi nombre es Yolani Quintero. Eh, Soy asistente legal de la firma Prime Solution Tax and Legals. Ya tengo, pues, eh, dos años en esta firma. Eh, mi experiencia realmente va más enfocada a lo que son los temas de residencia 
para los extranjeros en la República de Panamá, así como también eh, manejo la parte eh, corporativa, la creación pues, de compañías y todo el marco regulatorio de las compañías en, en Panamá. Y bueno, tengo ya nueve años de experiencia en estas ramas y es lo que hago pues, día tras día. También, eh, al igual que la licenciada Giovanna, pues eh, soy de la provincia de Herrera, de la región de Azuero, específicamente de un pueblo eh, que se llama Los Pozos de Herrera. Eh, tengo 33 años y bueno, eh, trabajamos para, para darle soluciones a todo lo que pues, nos solicitan, sobre todo en el tema de eh, residir y estar en la República de Panamá. Gracias. Now, um, Giovanna, I think I caught some of that, but can you just give us a recap for those of us that don't speak um, Spanish? Yes, sure. Girlani is uh, originally from a city very close to mine, which is called Los Pozos. She's 33 years old and she is assisting us, especially in the immigration uh, matters and corporate matters, uh, finding solutions for clients that they want to live uh, in Panama mostly. Okay, thank you. So let me just start by asking, um, how has COVID affected the immigration process in Panama? Well, that's a very good question because the lockdown started in March 12 and everything was closed. So all the flights and the institutions like the immigration office and the Ministry of Labor so we were closed for more than three months, I, I think. Uh, in July, the, the institutions started to open slowly, slowly. And you know that mo a lot of people are outside Panama and they are waiting to come to here. So they, if they don't come to Panama, they cannot apply. This is a, a requirement for them. If they are registered, they have the registration stamp in their passport some of them can apply but this is something that is still not uh, it's not official yet so this is something that caused us um, a lot of trouble because we were not able to help to help them properly uh, until in july they started uh, opening firstly to lawyers and then to everybody by gender because as, as you know, we opened uh, for women three days a week and for, for men three, three other days. This will stop next week. <laughs> and yes, it was a bit of trouble. Now the Ministry of Labor is open by appointments, which makes the process a bit slow because we need to request the appointments and all that. And we, before, the, before COVID, we, we could go a, any day to, to, to submit the papers. So for individuals that are wanting to apply, like in our group, um, I noticed that, you know, some people want to come to Panama within the next six months or in uh, within the next year, you know, what steps should they be taking or what should they be doing now to prepare for the immigration process? Well, um, if they want to be preparing themselves, they can start obtaining their criminal records. For example, if they're from, from the U.S., they need to get their criminal records from the FBI, duly legalized with right. the apostille, because this kind of documents has an expiration of mm -hmm. six months. And we expect that uh, international flights will start, the airport will start opening in October. So this is something that they, that can that they can produce in the meantime if they are out of Panama. Do if they know, live here, well, it's possible. I'm sorry. Um, do you know, like, for example, if somebody's passport is expiring, I mean, some, not somebody's passport, but somebody's visa is expiring and they need to renew it, you know, are there, are there already things set in place um, to help those people who are running out of time as a result of us being closed? Yes, if the visa is expired, um, they have a few months to, 
to ha to keep it valid and i'm going to handle the 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 words to to Gidlani, okay. uh, so she can play further Gidlani, uh, charlotte nos está preguntando si la visa expira tienen algún tiempo adicional para la visa de turista expira para estar aquí en en panamá Uh -huh. eh, sí, la, eh, depende de la nacionalidad del extranjero, de eso va a de depender el tiempo de estadía en el territorio eh, nacional. Si es en el caso eh, especial de, de los estadounidenses, tienen eh, 180 días para estar en el territorio nacional, sin que de momento se pueda pedir una extensión posterior a los 180 días. Y ahí entonces, en ese lapsus, tendrían que hacer la solicitud de la residencia con los documentos que estaba explicando la licenciada. Ok, she's telling us for the, for the participants that doesn't, learn, uh, doesn't speak Spanish, that um, for the, 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 the applicants will have six months to apply for their residence, and for example, if, if uh, there is a nationality that is American, they will have uh, six months to stay in Panama, but no, that would be the expiration that they have to submit the papers, otherwise they, they will have to pay a penalty of $50, $50 a month. Mm -hmm. Um, so if they if they have a visa that is expiring now, there is no extension, pretty much. There is a way to, to get an extension of three months. Okay. But uh, it will take time, probably okay. more than three months. Mm -hmm. Okay. They might need to contact their attorney. Yes. Okay. Okay. So now tell me this. Now, um, I happen to be married to a Panamanian citizen. And so the process that we worked through was different than a lot of other people that are coming into Panama. So can you tell us the different options that immigrants have to come into Panama? Yes. Um, I will tell you the most popular ones first, so you can un understand the, 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 those ones. The, Depends on your depending on your nationality, you have the friendly nations visa. Maybe you heard about it. Uh, if you have a nationality or passport coming from up to 50 countries, you are able to get this permanent visa. Uh, you will get a work permit for three years and you can renew this as well. And you can you will be able to work and do business. You will get also the Panamanian ID, which is very convenient. And it's, very, it's a very easy way to get the visa because you only need to basically show that you are a nationality included in this type of visa. Uh, for example, the United States, Canada, Chile, Mexico, um, Argentina, most countries in Europe, Singapore, Taiwan, Korea, they are members. And uh, this is one of the most popular ones. If you belong to some of those nationalities. Then if you don't, uh, you have to choose between an, an investment way or a work type of category or a professional one. For instance, if you decide to invest, you come into Panama to invest, you can um, request the permanent visa based on investment by buying a property or a bank account, a fixed deposit, which is uh, with the amount of three hundred thousand dollars, and you will get the permanent residence. This is another way to get it. If you are retired, you can show that you have more than uh, you are earning more than one thousand dollars a month, and you can also get this permanent residence. And as a professional, it's another way. If you get a degree from a university or a master degree or a PhD or you can get the, the visa. The only thing about this type of visa is that you need to request our University of Panama to recognize the title. And that's, that might take a, a few months to do that. Uh, but mostly those are the ones, the most popular ones. Then if you 
as your case by by family for family reasons if you have a son or a daughter which is older than five years old you can get the permanent visa or if you marry uh, a panamanian uh, someone with panamanian nationality this, this also grants you the the residence as well those are the the most uh, ones that the most important ones that we normally use in our day-to-day -day, uh, service um i'm glad that you spoke about the investment part because i didn't know how that worked so if you're going to invest in real estate in panama you can request residents as a result of that investment exactly you can also mix that investment for for instance you buy a property of one hundred fifty thousand dollars and you save one hundred fifty thousand dollars for three years in a bank account as a fixed term deposit mm -hmm. and then you can get it as well it it can be mixed or in property or by a fixed term deposit Okay, so are you saying so? With the investment, is it three hundred thousand? Yes. Got you. Okay, so that's mm -hmm. that's the piece. Okay, that's uh, mm -hmm. that's awesome. Girlani, did you want to add anything to that? I don't know. If she heard me. You want to? Did Girlani si quiere agregar algo sobre los tipos de visas? que tenemos. Bueno, puedo agregar eh, la oportunidad que también le da al extranjero de optar pues por su permiso de trabajo si es, si tiene una oferta laboral o está buscando pues desarrollarse en Panamá. Eh, eh, ya sea que tenga pues una oferta en una empresa determinada o que eh, a su vez Eh, desea establecerse aquí y cumplir pues con todos los parámetros de ley, eh, podría también optar por tener lo que es su permiso de trabajo. O sea, también es una, es, es una oportunidad pues que tienen los extranjeros al momento de optar por residencia, eh, ya sea como países amigos, como profesional, tienen la oportunidad pues de optar por permisos de trabajo en la República de Panamá. Gracias. Uh -huh. Yes, she, Girlani is telling us that uh, there are also categories that allow you to work in Panama, for example, Países Amigos, which is the Friendly Nations visa. And there is another one that is uh, called 10%, that if you, if you are hired by a Panamanian company, you can get this type of uh, work permit and also the residence for one year. And if you comply with the laws, you can get also the work permit on another type of visa like professional or um, nowadays as a dependent. If you are a dependent, which is that you are attached to the principal application as a husband or wife, or if you are older than 18 years old as a, as a dependent, you can also get the work permit. This is not a part of the translation, but I just remember that it's a, quite useful. <laughs> to say. That is that is good. So now, um, let while while we're still on like immigration and how we get to be um, residents, and I'll just say as far as my experience, I was so nervous. Um, I was nervous, but you all had it set up for me. You had a professional translator. So for me, coming in as the spouse of a Panamanian, we had to do the interview to make sure, I guess, that we really knew each other. And, um, you know, they asked, you could only miss so many questions. You know, and they interviewed him by himself and then they interviewed me. And um, it was really kind of confusing because I was trying to keep track of whether they're talking about when we're living in Panama or when we're living in the United States. So I was afraid that I was going to mess up. But happy mm -hmm. you had that certified professional translator um, for me and that that made it better. Um, and so that kind of took some of the stress off of me. And also Yolani was amazing. 
because she mm -hmm. held our hand the whole time. I mean, she came to the immigration every time that we had to go. You know, she was there. She was there before we got there. She had already had stuff, you know, set in motion. And then basically when we got there, she just grabbed us by the hand and like, okay, this is what we need to do. So that really took a lot of stress off of me too. Because when you're a person, and, you know, it's, it's very courageous to go to a country that you don't speak the language. Very courageous. As much as I love Panama, I feel like that is the most challenging part. You know, even to the point where, like, I want to be your Lani's best friend, but we, you know, and we have communication, you know what I mean? Like challenges. <laughs> So I just really love the fact that, you know, she communicated with Alfredo, she communicated with me mm -hmm. as we were doing, you know, Google Translate, and it just made my heart, it, it, just, it just gave me a lot of peace. And so I appreciate that. Um, and so when people are coming um, to Panama and they want to start a business, how is the best way to do that? Like, how does that work? And I do know that there are some professions that are only for Panamanians. Can you speak to us about that? Yes. There are two ways to do business in Panama. You can do it um, by yourself as a physical person. We, uh, you can request the business license as a physical person, or you can set up uh, Panamanian Corporation. In Panama, we have different type of companies, and this is a question that we always get from from expats. That okay, what type of company can we use, or can we operate uh, um, as myself using my uh, passport? And and it will be, And the answer is that it will depends because as a physical person, you can do. As Charlotte said, some activities that are some that, that are not allowed, for example, those that need uh, registration, like being a lawyer or an accountant or doctor, those kind of uh, professions cannot be done um, by um, foreigners in Panama. But services and wholesale, being a distributor or agent or selling uh, to to clients in Panama and this is something that is allowed and uh, having a company it will allow you to protect your assets from the ones that are that belongs to you personally because you will separate those that belongs to you to the, the ones that are in the company so you separate the risk this is an advantage but as I said it will depend because you also can start being a physical person and then you can move to uh, to a company with all the formalities it has. It has. So when you say being a physical person, do you mean like just as it, um, what we would call in the United States sole proprietor, just like a small business just to yourself, like everything is under your name? Is that what you mean? Exactly. Okay. Yes. Uh-huh. In and then, Spanish, you get we more, uh, then you can then you can move into the more structured um, corporation. Yes, this is something that can be done. Okay. Can be done. And then, by the tax perspective, it gives you an advantage that the first eleven thousand dollars you you generate in the in the year are exempt of income tax. Income tax. So, um, so income tax. What is income tax like in Panama? In Panama, if you set up a corporation, the income tax is of 25%. If you do it as a solo proprietorship, you, like you said, as a physical person, mm -hmm. it will depend. If you have an income up to 50000 a year, it's 15%, 515. Five. Oh. But if you have more, it's um, more than 50000 in a year, it's, it's the same, 25%. That is good information. That is good information. And let me just ask you while we're still, while we're on um, working. So attorneys, doctors, um, accountants, accountants, they are like three, three professions. Can, can, how about realtors? Do realtors have to be Panamanian? 
they have to they have to get the Panamanian nationality in five okay. years. Okay. So that's okay. what I was wondering. So these professions are held by Panama residents. Do you have to be a born Panamanian or can you be somebody that is nationalized or become a resident? You Once can you become, become a resident, uh, you can be a lawyer. Can you do that? As not as a as a resident, but as with a Panamanian citizenship. citizenship. You, gotcha. you can get that if you become resident in five years yes. or if you marry with a Panamanian in three years okay. or if you belong to some special nationalities like Colombia, Venezuela, we have a list. Uh, you, can, you can get it in less time than five years. Our national constitution says that you can become Panamanian in five, but it can be done in less in some cases. Okay. Well, that's mm -hmm. awesome. Um, what I want to um, say now is I just want to ask you, um, I'm going to hop back to the residents for a minute. And what are the kinds, what are some of the things that we should avoid or that we should look out for when we're starting to pursue our residents? And then also, I want to bring um, Yolani back in the conversation. So if you want to ask her something after you answer that question, that's, that's great. Okay, great. Um, some things that we recommend you when you want to start your residence process or when you want to start something that is required to be handled by a lawyer in Panama is that you try to find a good lawyer, especially which is referred by someone because that way you make sure that uh, this, is, this is someone that has done a very good job in the past and you will save time and money and another thing is that you have to bring all your documents, please pay attention to your lawyer, to their, their advice, so you can follow the, their, their instructions and comply with everything. So every, the process will be smooth and fast. This is something, uh, and I will uh, ask you, Lani, about uh, the immigration process. Girlani, si hay alguna, alguna, algún tipo de residencia que quisiera si quisiera agregar o si hay alguna algún requisito o algún que considere para hacer negocios en Panamá no sé si quiera agregar algo que eh, bueno creo que la licenciada ha, ha sido bastante ha explicado bastante pues uh -huh. bien todas las la residencias que, que son las que, que pueden aplicar pues lo, los extranjeros eh, eh, las opciones o sea, también de, cuando de, la... de que los... Ajá. dígame dígame sí sobre el tema que los, los, las cosas que, ten, que los extranjeros tienen que, que evitar aquí cuando están en Panamá ¿no? que nos han llegado pues los casos de abogados de, de, de clientes pues que se han sentido estafados por algunos abogados y han tenido algún problema Por, por no, con sus documentos que no han venido en orden bueno, usted tiene mucha experiencia con clientes extranjeros en temas de migración bueno, realmente eh, los extranjeros lo más importante es pues tener la documentación en, en regla tener, eh, gozar pues de, de, de que su récord policivo pues no tenga ninguna falta aunque sea administrativa ni nada de eso eh, que tenga pues la intención de radicarse aquí en la ciudad de Panamá, eh, en el caso especial pues de los jubilados, pues tienen muchas más ventajas en temas de, de pago de impuestos y de políticas especiales a las cuales pueden ellos aplicar. Eh, también pues la oportunidad para los que quieren venir eh, a estudiar, también hay eh, visas de estudiantes Eh, abren algunas algunas puertas y algunas posibilidades para los que son más jóvenes que, que quieren pues eh, tener aquí en Panamá una residencia que quieren también algunos que vienen a, a aplicar eh, para hablar español para aprender español y también pues esa es una de las oportunidades que hay como estudiantes y pues políticas especiales Ya hablamos de, de los jubilados, de los rentistas también eh, retirados. Eso también es una muy buena oportunidad, sobre todo pues para las personas que ya no quieren 
eh, estar, que ya se han retirado de sus labores y desean pues, tener un ambiente más tranquilo. Eh, aquí hay zonas especiales, por lo menos en la provincia de Chiriquí, donde han, se han radicado muchísimos aquellos que les gusta la tranquilidad. La naturaleza también es una muy buena oportunidad para aplicar aquí en Panamá. Ok, a ver, thank you, Gislani. <laughs> Gracias. Uh, Gislani is telling that um, there are advantages to, to, to live in Panama, for example, for retired people. They can move here and they can get tax incentives if they, they can get discounts as well. If they live here for a while, you will see that you have uh, so many discounts. You can also be come here for study to study and also as a student you can learn Spanish and you can get um, the, the benefits of meeting other people and about you can also move to the interior of the country out of Panama for example Chiriquí. Chiriquí is a very nice area where you can live retire it has a lot of nature and some other places as well. That is Muy importante. Gracias, Yelani. <laughs> That's good information. That really is good information. And I am Ubelado, right? I get the discounts. So, uh, so I'm 55. So I think for women, it's 55. And for men, it's 60? Where you for get for that, women, it's 55, now? 62. 62 62 62 for hombres, para hombres, oh. 55, 62. Yes, I know I get it and I love it. It's like 20% at restaurants. Um, I also get uh, discounts on my Copa Air flights. And Ooh. so I love that. But so listen, I am going to have you guys back, you know, periodically just to update us on things that are going on. But in the meantime, um, I would like for you to tell us how to get in touch with you um, if, if we need um, legal counsel. Great. Um, I will share with you our details. Okay. Here. Can you see it? I don't see, I, oops. I only see a white screen. Okay, one moment. Okay. I'll try again. Okay. Here. Ta-da! Okay? <laughs> yes, this is our email, um, phone number. Well, don't call the fixed line because now, because of COVID, we are closed. We are working from home. And, but you can call us, yes, you can call um, the Mo My Mobile or send us an email to the info. And you can go to a website and you, you, you have WeChat, if you have WeChat or WhatsApp as well. Awesome, awesome, thank you. Um, I, okay, so I'm gonna close out. I just want to know if Jolani has any uh, parting words that she wanna leave with us. Que si quiere decir algo, Jolani, para para el público. Algo más agregamos. Eh, bueno, re, eh, ofrecerle las oportunidades que tenemos en, en la ciudad de Panamá, en la República de Panamá, las, las oportunidades de tener una residencia que abre muchas puertas eh, y que, bueno, todavía Panamá es un es un país que es a nivel mundial, pues todavía tenemos una buena calificación. Y eh, bueno, exhortarles a todo el que quiera pues tener una inversión en la ciudad de Panamá, en cualquiera, un, en cualquiera de las áreas, ya sea que, que tengan la intención pues de venir a Panamá, de invertir y tener su compañía aquí, también tiene muchas facilidades. Porque no, no solamente es el punto de, de, de estar eh, físicamente en Panamá, sino que tenemos la oportunidad de, a través de nuestra jurisdicción de sociedades y compañías, tener la oportunidad de que las mismas sean panameñas, con, establecidas con nuestras leyes panameñas, pero que a la vez puedan ser manejadas desde cualquier parte del mundo. 
y creo que eso es también una gran oportunidad para quienes no quieren estar siempre en Panamá o son empresarios o, o comerciantes que tengan una movilidad, Panamá les abre las puertas en ese sentido y también pues a nivel de residencia tenemos bastantes oportunidades, bastantes opciones que no requieren tampoco estar eh, todo el tiempo en Panamá, sino que permiten pues la movilidad a nivel de los países donde se quieran proyectar. Gracias. Panama offers um, different type of resident and incentives. So this is something that you can take advantage of also because of the Panama location. It's a good place where you can come and stay and also you could travel, you could do business anywhere else and you can still come back. Uh, from the immigration point of view, you can come back every two years and you can keep your residence. So this is a good uh, place to stay and to do business. Uh, as a good point uh, to stay and also some tourism and have fun. It is. It really is. And um, I love Panama. I, I, I wish my Spanish were better. Um, I was getting better, but since the COVID, I mean, I haven't been there since March 9th. And I've really suffered because being there like every month, you know, was really helping me to build my um, Spanish. And so I, I miss that part of it. But, um, you know, we live in Brisa de Golf Norte. And I love Brisa. Um, I am what they call a suburban chick. Um, I do not want to live at the ocean. I do not want to live in the woods. You know, I want to live close enough to the city and close enough to the ocean and close enough to the airport. That is Brisa de Golf Norte. That is just my place. I love it. Um, I miss it. I'm so glad that we made the decision to um, retire in Panama. And um, I'm looking forward to just being there full time. I really am. So I just want to thank you guys um, for coming on. Thank you for the excellent information. Thank you for giving uh, me and my husband such exceptional service uh, when we were looking. And I know, I, you know, you know, Americans, North Americans can be what we call extra credit. So we have a lot of questions and we send a lot of emails <laughs> and what's going to happen next. And you all just handled me with love and care and, you know, you were patient with me. And I appreciate it to the point that you will never truly understand how much I appreciate it. I often talk about the first advice that I got, the first good advice I got when I moved to Panama. And that advice was, you know, forget everything I know about the United States. This is Panama. You know, so coming into a new country, you, you only know what you know right? And so when things are different, it throws you off balance. So it's very important to work with professionals who understand that you're not privy to the service. You know what I mean? You're not privy to the way things go and you kind of need some extra hand holding. And so I appreciate that uh, for you. So with that, we're going to, um, uh, did you want to say something? I'm sorry. No, I just want to thank you as well to you and Alfredo. You were great. <laughs> thank you. Having you. Thank you so much. Um, so this is Charlotte Van Horn, um, founder of Black Expats in Panama, our Facebook page and group. And if you haven't already become a member, you want to get over there and become a member soon because we have a really huge <laughs> announcement that is coming and it will be on a first come first serve basis and you want to make sure that you are in the cut. So with that, I'm going to say thank you, Yolani. Thank you, Giovanna. And I look forward to seeing you guys back in Panama. Kiss. Thank you. See you soon, hopefully. Okay. Gracias. Gracias por la oportunidad. Gracias. Bye. Bye. -bye.